Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is the story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. I convinced a homeless man to dirty the washroom at a restaurant I worked at and quit. Left it for my boss to clean. The second story. Got scammed. Tricked the scammer into thinking I knew who he was for sure. The third story. Coworker didn't become number one salesperson because she treated me badly. On to the first story. My revenge on my boss for trying to take my pay. This is a long one from a few years back, when I was a teen working at a generic fast food restaurant while in school. I was 16 at the time and had been working at this store for a year or so. We had this supervisor who was just horrible to work for. He would leave us while we were packed with customers and sit on his phone talking the whole shift, only come out to bark orders and abuse us for not working hard enough eat the food we were cooking, and when customers complained he would belittle us in front of them, blaming our attitudes. Now, everyone hated this guy. Even the other supervisors hated him. He was lazy, and to be completely honest, I think he only had the job because his uncle owned the store. He would come in to start his shift, plan his A in the office and wouldn't come out, unless it was to tell you how SH you are, and how he isn't afraid to replace you. We were all teens working that needed the money for our families, and he knew this and would hold our jobs over our head. The store was in a bad area. We were all either supporting our families or trying to stay out of gangs and whatnot. The store is open until late, so we can get good hours in after school. Well, this one particular night, we were very short-handed. It was me, my workmate Joe, and supervisor. Me and Joe assumed he would back us up and serve customers while I cooked, and Joe made all the burgers and wraps. But no, he came in, planted his A in the office, and told me to cook as well as do burgers and wraps, and Joe will serve. I protested and said it was too much for me to cover. He completely ignores me and acts as if he didn't hear a word I said. So I protest a little louder, and no joke, he turns to me and says, well, if you don't like it, you can kiss this job goodbye. I bit my tongue and returned to my duties peeved off. Joe was peeved off too. He knew that if supervisor ran things this way, he would receive all the abuse, as he was the person out front serving. Like I said, we were in a bad area. Customers often came in drunk and irritable. There's often fights, and we get a lot of homeless people loitering and junkies. He knew he was going to get abused by someone tonight who would possibly throw something at him. Fast forward a few hours into our shift and we're in the middle of our dinner rush. There's an SH load of orders to be made and not enough meat cooked to make it all. Customers are complaining about waiting times. I can hear Joe out the front getting absolutely destroyed by the growing mob of angry customers whom he's doing his best to keep calm. Supervisor for the first time the entire shift comes out to see what's happening. He sees the mob of angry customers who are starting to shout in anger, hurling insults and all. He goes out to confront them and calls me to the front. As soon as I'm inside of the mob and supervisor, he starts to berate me, throwing a thousand questions at me at once. Why isn't this done? Why isn't that done? Abuse me further. Then calls Joe over, abuses us both and tells the customers he's sorry we're so incompetent and pulls us both out back. If you two don't lift your game, you won't be working here any longer. And just because you fell so far behind, I'm taking tonight's pay from you. At this point, I wanted to kill him. We were working our A's off while short-handed, and he didn't lift a finger to help us. I wouldn't let this slide. It lit a fire in me and I was going to make sure I got paid for tonight no matter what. So I plotted. I planned. I concocted a most evil plan, in my pot of payback potions, and would soon conjure it into existence. I even asked Joe for help with it, and he agreed willingly once I told him the plan. This plan would make us legends of our store. Executing the plan. After the rush was over and we were about to close shop, I went on my break. Remember how I said we had a lot of homeless people loitering? Well, I'm thankful we did. While I was on my break, I convinced a homeless man to come and take a dump in the urinal in our bathroom, and I would get him some free food. He laughed at me in first and asked if I was serious. It took a little convincing, as he couldn't believe someone was asking him to do something he usually does without being asked, or offered food for. He agrees after a bit, but I told him I'd have to sneak him in with the help of Joe. I bring him to the slide doors and signal Joe to distract supervisor long enough for him to turn his head from the computer screen and cameras. We slip in and make it to the bathroom. When we get there, I tell him to go in and do the deed while I go make his food. He giggles and agrees and heads in. I headed to the kitchen where Joe is and tell him the job's underway and I'll need a distraction to get him out once he's done. Joe tells me he'll go tell supervisor he's leaving. It'll give me a moment to get him back out quick. I make the guy's food and head back to the bathroom entrance, but he's still not out. I was waiting a good 10 minutes. He had been there over 20 minutes. When he exited, I catch a whiff of a most foul odor seeping from the bathroom. What the heck, dude? What did you do in there? He tells me he may have missed a bit, but job's done more or less. I give his food to him and signal Joe to distract again. Once he does, I sneak old guy out of the store and thank him for his help, which he replies, 
I've been asked some weird SH, but you kid are messed up. I wasn't about to let him steal my pay from me. I was going to make him pay for it. I head back to the bathroom to check, and I tell you I couldn't have asked the guy to do a better job. Joe swings by on his way out and couldn't believe what he was seeing. I shook his hand and said to him, it was a pleasure to work with you and good luck. He leaves and I go to confront supervisor. Once I reach the office, I let everything go on him. I swore at him, told him I quit. Joe's gone home, I'm leaving. Nothing's been cleaned for clothes and someone took an SH in the urinal again. He begged me not to leave while I laughed at him maniacally, told him to peeve off. You want to take my pay? Take the job too. I threw my shirt at him, walked out and never went back. I heard from Joe that supervisor was there all night cleaning everything and was forced to clean the bathroom. Everyone except supervisor knows what I did and cheered for me for doing it. I went down in store history for the next year. Because it closed after that and was replaced by another generic fast food store. The next story is, someone scammed me for $280 and a lot of other people for even more, but I wasn't accepting defeat. My birthday's coming up and I decided to treat myself to a new pair of sneakers. Been having a good year at my job and I don't really spend much on myself. I've always wanted a pair of Yeezys, so I got online and found a pair at a really good price. When I was messaging the seller, he asked if I would be willing to not pay through the site to avoid seller fees and he would sell even cheaper. He even offered to take the payment through Chase, which I assumed would have me protected. So he used the Zell Quick Pay feature. Before I sent the money, he even sent me a pic of the sneakers and pics of several receipts from the UPS and USPS, showing that he sells several pairs of sneakers and actually ships them. I agree and we begin a conversation on IG. Guy seems pretty legit, doesn't look like he needs to scam people. He seems legit enough, so I send him the funds thinking I just got a deal. No response after the funds are sent. A day goes by with no answers. At this point, I chalked it up to a loss and learned my lesson. Should have spent the extra $40 and got it from a verified site. Also, do not use Zelle. Chase told me because I use QuickPay, there's nothing they could do except contact the police. They had no fraud protection for Zelle, even though I paid it through Chase. Turns out Zelle is a scammer's best friend. Only trust PayPal. At that point, I'm more peeved that I allowed myself to get scammed. Not so much about the money, I'll survive. This is when I go into full 007 mode and start my revenge. I find the guy on Facebook and put his name into the white pages and find his home number and I call it. The kids still live with his parents, so I figure they should know what's going on. I speak with his mother and she has no idea what's going on, but that he isn't home. I said unless you want cops at your door, he better call me. Five minutes later, I get a restricted call. It's him. He has no idea who I am and had not been speaking with me at all. Actually, turns out his phone was stolen on New Year's Eve and didn't have his Instagram account locked or his Venmo account. The guy who stole his phone used his Grailed account and IG to post shoes and then never sent any of them. Happened to a bunch of people in a few days. This is where the guy effed up. The real guy tracked the Venmo account and matched it to a very similar FB and IG account name. I decided to throw a dart in the dark and send a pic of the Facebook account to the guy who scammed me. First response, where did you get that? For whatever reason, the scammer decided to text me from his real number at that point. Now, I have his number. I now decided to BS and told him that the Chase fraud specialist is waiting for me to send the pictures of the receipts he sends me. I told him they could use the very visible tracking numbers to find the seller and their billing info since it was a debit transaction and that I now had Facebook photos of him and a name and a number. I told him that the real person told me there was an active police investigation and this was the info they needed. I started demanding my money back or I would turn everything over and in five minutes I had all my cash back. He made me promise to delete everything if he sent it all back. I even gave him some answers about the fake conversation I had with Chase. He was trying to find out what I slash they knew, which was everything. Best part was he also used his personal account to send me the money back, which shows his real name, had a slightly different one on Facebook. The account would also have all of his billing info. He wasn't a very good scammer. All the accounts were deleted and I've been blocked. Doesn't matter. I'm sending everything to the poor guy this scammer has been destroying. The poor guy said it's been the worst four days of his life. Constant calls and emails about being scammed. Luckily, Venmo covered all the money that the scammer transferred out of his account, but he also wants revenge. Hopefully, he'll get it now, since we know exactly who it is. I did go through a verified site and purchase the shoes for reals with no worries. I had to have them on principle at that point, haha. <laughs> the third story. Maybe salespeople shouldn't mess with their cashiers. So, I'm a cashier at a hardware store. The salespeople on the floor have stickers and or employee numbers that they attach to big ticket items to get credit for it. They don't make commission, but it is kept track of in our systems, so it can be looked up, and we can see who makes the most money for the company in each department, and sometimes small bonuses are given, but they're not expected or required. It's mostly bragging rights and bargaining chips for promotions and raises. Tammy in the lumber department's not a nice lady to cashiers. I don't know why, but somehow she feels that if we make a mistake and sell something wrong from her department, it's a personal insult to her. 
despite there being at least four more people who work in that department. So she takes it upon herself to leave her department and come to the front of the store to read the riot act to any cashier that rang something up wrong. Now normally if a cashier makes a mistake, the person who finds it lets them know in a civil calm manner, or the cashier notices their accuracy numbers are down and tries to fix it themselves. Tammy's the only person in the store who feels it necessary to loudly and angrily lecture the cashiers, on the clock, in front of customers and coworkers. Keep in mind that a cashier making a mistake doesn't actually affect her personally very much at all. At the most, inventory might be off because someone sold a 2x2x8 oak that was actually a 2x2x8 fur, which yes, it's annoying, but not worth humiliating a human being who made a human error. After the second time she chewed me out, I decided that, hmm, oh gee whiz, when she sells $400 worth of stuff, when I ring it up, oh boy, I just didn't happen to see her employee number on it, despite it being right next to the barcode. I've told one other cashier who adopted this practice, who told another, who told another, and so far it's quietly spread across at least half the cashiers, who have been disrespectfully shouted at and talked down to by Tammy. Most of us have now memorized her six-digit number, so even if she sneaks it on there, just numbers by themselves instead of including her name too, we still won't add it. Guess who's no longer the number one salesperson in Lumber anymore? She's not even in the top three as of two weeks after ripping me a new one. Maybe don't screw with your cashiers. Early this morning, Tammy came at the head cashier. I just watched the head cashier have a meeting with the store manager, then they both talked to Tammy. From what I overheard, they explained that cashiers are not lumber experts, that we cannot tell the difference between pine and oak or spruce and cedar, that lumber needs to keep up with marking the different types. The last story is, make him repaint for no reason, you'll love the result. This was in another country, a very letter of the law kind of place. My friend had a long-term lease on a home, five years, which stipulated that he has to repaint every room the day he moved out. So he found popular neutral paint colors, hired a handyman, and had the place freshly painted the day before his moving truck showed up. Well, his landlord showed up waving their contract, yelling. The wording said the day he moved out, not the day before. The landlord was convinced that the movers would scuff up the walls. He wanted the house left pristine. He really was ready to take the case to court. My friend was crushed. Between painting, moving, and the deposit on his new place, he had no money to repaint or to go to court. I was furious with this landlord. I went to the house and saw the paint job was fine, not scuffed. My friend and I met that night at the old house. Per his contract, we repainted every wall. Solid black. We even did some ceilings. Would have done them all if we had time. I don't know if it's just me. I have a fascination with hidden images. I took clear glow in the dark paint and illustrated demons in the closet walls and in shadowy corners. They were all pretty shadowy by the time we left. We left a copy of the contract for the landlord. Walls freshly painted the day he left. He never specified the color. We also had before and after photos printed out. This was over 10 years ago, and there was no fallout. The same letter of the law mentality that would have allowed the landlord to take the renter to court also allowed us to get away with this. The glow-in-the-dark paint was fun, but didn't work very well, so the pictures are just a really ugly black apartment. You want to take us to court with that contract? Go ahead. Never heard from him again. If you want more stories, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Have a good one.